Hey there, it's Everlost, and it's time for another video about the SimJack Pro pedals. In today's episode, I'll show you how to adjust the pedals, attach using Feld elastomers without drilling, fix wobbling, and use DI view. Let's get started. It is quite personal preference, but just try testing this. Set the throttle and clutch travel lock in the middle of their ranges. Lower the movable clutch lever at least to the third hole from the top, and set the brake lock at its maximum range. As I mentioned at the beginning, this kind of adjustment is a personal preference, but the settings I'm sharing today reduce wear on the throttle pedal spring and in my opinion, provide a better feeling. Let me know in the comments if it was a good suggestion for you. The set you see here is nothing new. I presented it in the previous video. We have here a 3D printed shaft guide. A replica of the Husingveld Ultimate Spring. A spring compression limiter made of hard TPU. Plastic washers that don't scratch the shaft. And elastomers from the Husingveld Sprint Kit. The current shaft is 8.3 mm in diameter and allows for the elastomers to be installed straight out of the box. Since the rod head has an M10 thread, I used a special adapter that reduces it to M8. I already had experience with elastomers made from polyurethane tubes, 3D printed TPU and a set of springs with varying lengths and hardness. This particular set is my favorite. Let's check out the benefits. You get four different elastomers, providing a sufficient level of customization. This product is widely available and the price, compared to, for example, 3D printed ones, is quite reasonable. The only challenge for SimJack Pro users is the assembly, so that's why I'm demonstrating one of the solutions today. On a side note, the spring used here along with the limiter provides a nice feeling but it's not the most crucial. It's like a slight gap before the compression of the elastomers. Even some ultimate users completely block the movement of this spring. So if you don't have this element, it's not the end of the world. Another alternative if you're looking to upgrade your brake could be the set from Venom or the Heusingveld Ultimate Plus kit with their controller and shaft. The problem is that both, despite their benefits, significantly increase the overall cost of the pedals and SimJack Pro users generally did not expect high costs when choosing to purchase this product. So, I will keep it budget friendly. To check whether the pedal levers really have side play, it is necessary to remove all shafts and additional rods. As you can see, the play is terrible. Fortunately, the currently produced pedals are better fitted and adjusted with spacer washers. To keep the overall modification cost low, I will also use spacer washers, but I will place them on the inner side of the brass sliders. The manufacturer uses slightly smaller washers and places them between the sliders and the pedal base. I will place them between the sliders and the pedal lever. I believe it will allow for a better contact area between the lever and the pedal base and make them stiffer. Mm -hmm. 
It is crucial in this case to carefully remove the brass sliders because they are not of the highest quality and can be easily damaged. If you are concerned about damaging them, you can try adding spacer washers as the manufacturer currently does, that is, on the outer side of the sliders. In my case, washers with a thickness of 0.2 mm worked well, but it is also a good idea to get thicknesses of 0.1 and 0.3 mm. As you can see, the problem is solved. No side movement. In DI view, navigate to the settings. Hide all devices except SimJack Pro. Right click on each axis and select View Raw Data. Use the minimum and maximum values displayed in red for each axis in the provided Excel spreadsheet. Next, right-click on the selected axis, choose Calibrate and use the calculated data highlighted in green. If the entered value is negative, you must copy this minus sign and paste it in the next field. After pressing OK, you can see that the pedal use full scale of the axis. Repeat this process for the throttle and brake. For the brake, decide how strong the press should be for your maximum and use that value in the spreadsheet. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.
By saving the spreadsheet, you can always easily reproduce or modify your calibration.